both drop down. So, uh, so uh, will you please guide me how? Uh, uh, so, uh, what are what are the preparation for both doctoral position after finishing PhD? Okay. How how can we get? Yeah, I can actually briefly, uh, you know, uh, touch upon that. Although I have recorded a uh, podcast yesterday, you can watch it. We'll share the link. Also, so regarding postdoc, I'll first say that you should be very clear and understand that uh, to pursue. Guys, can you please mute yourself and only unmute when you are speaking? It will, you know, help us to facilitate the conversation. So, yes, I was saying that everybody should understand and should recognize whether he or she really needs a postdoc uh, thing to pursue their career. It's, it should not be the rat race, believe me. If you really wanted to make your career out of R&D, whether it's an industry, government institute or say in academia, then right. doing postdoc is an is a good option. It, it is needed and you really need experience. But suppose if you really want, if you really don't want to, because in industry also, it's not that only R&D is there after PhD. There can be different roles, right? There can be, you can be in uh, say marketing field or even in, it, it, you can be a science communicator. Say you, you can go into this science policy kind of thing. There are a lot of disciplines over there. I just really want you folks to understand like what is your core thing and like what do you want to do rest of the like you know rest of your life as a career so try to address that first that do you really need a postdoc and now coming to how do you want like how to fetch a postdoctoral position it's itself a big question and you have to systematically understand I come across a lot of questions that uh, they are, uh, you know, trying it through mail. And then I can remember there was one uh, guy from Delhi University. He said that he has emailed 500,000 of uh, mm -hmm. like two professors right. and they are not getting any mail. And then he was so bogged down that he was actually questioning self. It's not about you. It's not about you. Believe me, you have done your PhD. That means you have some skills and please believe yourself. So exactly. if you're not True. getting any reply, you are lacking something. It may be right. that the procedure can be wrong, you know. There yeah, are yeah. approach, limits. approach. Uh, yeah. we, have to, we, have, uh, we, have, uh, we have to we have we have to follow the right approach. Exactly. Because uh, it, it depends on the area of interest. Suppose I, I am working on additive manufacturing and specifically I am working on uh, cross-processing. So I need to find the opportunity in my domain and I have to find the professor or related uh, uh, any uh, university. So uh, based on my skill, based on my uh, publications, area of interest, then I can find the right position. Otherwise, uh, randomly that I, <laughs> I just say I didn't have any experience, uh, suppose in any, any, any kind of field in mechanical. So if I apply that, so nobody uh, will prefer me because of my peer ex experience. I feel that. Yeah, the, this can be one point, Abdul, but what I'm trying yeah. to say is even if you're applying in your core discipline, see, postdoctoral position is like somebody is paying you, somebody is hiring you as an international exactly. fellow specifically. True. So True. higher chances are if you are not approaching it in a right direction, people won't right. hire you and your document exactly. should be very well written because that will be the icebreaker for you. If you cannot, yeah. so you're too good with your knowledge, right? So yeah. if you get a chance to showcase your say presentation skills, say your knowledge and everything, your work. But if you are not able to get fetch an interview call, it is very hard. So one should understand that preparing good quality documents are mandatory, mandatory, and you have to True. do it beforehand. Okay. Very I always suggest that if you are in say last year of your PhD and you're writing your thesis, you're fetching mm -hmm. a postdoctoral position, the, the process should start beforehand. It should not be like you have submitted your thesis and then you'll think, okay, now from this day, I'll start. You should do all the background work. Pele say you have to see that uh, which area you really want to pursue, like, core area, right? Not just the broader thing, okay, chemistry, not just organic chemistry, not just, I mean, you have to be very specific at times. Yeah. But you can be like, I have switched a lot of, you know, uh, disciplines, mm -hmm. uh, topics, if I'll say like, 
I did my master's in analytic, like the project was too much of based on analytical work, although the organic chemistry was involved and my discipline was organic chemistry, but I did project out of that. Okay. Then I pursued like total synthesis that is hardcore organic work. Due to COVID, then I moved to computational kind of thing because labs were shut down. In IIT, in IIT Delhi? In IIT Delhi. Uh, and then after that, in postdoc, I'm doing a mid, mid game work, right? So it is okay mm -hmm. to switch because yesterday, some of the folk asked me that, uh, is it okay to switch the disciplines? It's totally okay if you, re if you really wanted to do and if something drives you, right? Coming to the postdoctoral mm. thing, the things I really wanted to mention is that, see, emails can be one way, but it is not short shot. I always say that bang, that door, that is meant to be open. Sometimes you are mailing to a professor whose lab is already fully packed. So even mm. if you're a good candidate, he won't take time to, you know, write some, if he's too generous or something like that, if you can devote that time, he might reply you. But sometimes usually professors are really occupied they won't reply you, right? So the exactly. so one thing is, of course, you can take this, you know, as one step. Okay, you you, you keep on mailing, uh, emailing a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, keep on emailing to a lot of professors. But this, it is only one part. This is not this through this you yeah. can fetch. Surely you can fetch a position. The other can be I usually ask ask people to please make an account on Twitter. See, it is my personal opinion. Yeah. I okay. have posted. LinkedIn and Twitter both, right? Okay. The possibility of getting a like you know advertisements of job because some of the labs are really really active on Twitter and you can you know how to start with it. Just keep on adding some of the professors, keep on following some of the professors from your field, and then the chain system will work. And then you can keep on you will get to know a lot of people if you are not aware of those. Okay, so. The probability of posting on Twitter is quite high. This is my personal opinion. So I'll suggest those people who are really wanted to, you know, uh, look for a postdoctoral position because, see, the chances are the position vacancy is there. It is meant for you or for somebody else, but it is there, right? So the chances of getting you selectors is higher rather than randomly mailing and then, you know, yeah trying to fetch some position and then the professor will say yeah, exactly. sort your funding and then mm -hmm. it is a good way to have your individual funding say you are applying sometimes uh, sometimes uh, we can do the collaboration for the research papers or any other things that that interaction we can be give the uh, if, if you interacted before you if you interacted any professor and you are doing any uh, any collaborative research or uh, that professor ha have interest in you so he uh, he or she will can uh, will will give you a uh, an intention that he will hire you any any in future yeah I think so... that, that can be that can be way one of my friend uh, he uh, recently he uh, he got a postdoctoral position in europe is a Marie Curie uh, postdoctoral position in, uh, in DC, uh, Dublin, Dublin University. So uh, he he said the same thing because he 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 have a good publication in in in, in his domain. So uh, before uh, before applying uh, for the Marie Curie uh, postdoctoral position, so that that professor uh, help help him. Yeah, yeah. So the, that, the networking yeah. also works. It depends. Sometimes mm. the professors have good links and sometimes uh, you can establish your own links uh, since you have attended a lot of conferences, presented paper mm. and you have, you know, communicated with some of the professors. Yeah. Ayushi, I remember that you are a, you, you are from IIT Roorkee, right? Yes. Yeah. So if uh, since you are in your final year, do you have some specific questions for postdoc? Uh, you have partly answered my questions. I just have two doubts right now. Yeah. Uh, first is, uh, I'm like six to seven months away from my submission, but I'm still waiting for two of my main uh, papers to be published. Like one I've already submitted, one I'll submit in the next two months. Although I have a couple of publications in my hand, but the, the main papers, like no, it's mine is more of interdisciplinary work. The work which I want to take forward is yet to be published. So, like, should I wait for its publication or I can still start uh, approaching them and say that, no, this is in the pipeline and I'm waiting for the publication. What would you recommend? 
Okay, so Ayushi, thank you for bringing that question. And I, I'll be very honest with you. So I am that fellow which didn't have a lot of publications, okay? So usually people say that uh, only publication matter is a myth, okay? And believe me, like all of my publications, six, seven, eight, whatever I fetched in PhD was only in the last year. And when I started, I didn't have a lot of things to show because I didn't have, you know, the, the publications, some of them were submitted, some were of them in revision stage. You might be facing that, right? But yes. it is always advisable to start fetching, to to start applying beforehand it's okay you can showcase that this is the work you have done okay in your cv you can mention that see there can be a topic of your you know title of your paper you can mention in publication sector in bracket you can say that it is under review whatever the stage of the paper is you can write it suppose if the professor likes your work then the chances are that now it, the ball is in your court. Now you have to showcase that you really uh, know the topic. You can really present it. And that's the work you have done it. Although it is, under, you know, it is not published yet. It's okay because these things will take time. But don't wait for it because I know a lot of folks usually do that in IIT Delhi also. People uh, wait for, you know, the publications to come out and then they, you know, then they start applying some and it it take it is a matter of months right and you know funding is also a, a big hurdle to people like us you we really wanted to have some financial support so sometimes you have to manage all if you are in within the fellowship if the period is not yet over start beforehand so that you can immediately join the moment your funding is not there okay so please keep all these things in mind so it's totally okay to keep applying and even if i'll suggest even if you are not if you have not submitted your submitted your thesis, right? I'll suggest mm -hmm. that please you can mention that that you are in a verge of submission. See, you won't get a lot of replies over it. I'll be deadly honest. Why I'm saying it? Uh, suppose you are writing a mail to professor, or if you are lucky, you fetched an interview position. It it will be a trial for you. You will you'll get polished when you really get some big guys or some big institute interviews. Maybe some. Some professor just want to have conversation with you. So you'll you'll get aligned to the, you know, environment. So how the postdoctoral interview works. So initially, professor just ask for your normal conversation, like what we are doing it, okay? He'll just ask mm -hmm. about you, your work. If the conversation seems to be meaningful, then only he'll say, okay, can you present your work in 30, 40 minutes in front of my group? Then followed by question and A. Maybe there will be a third round also. Sometimes professors say, okay, I know the presentation was good. Uh, your CV looks good. Can we have another conversation? Maybe that is regarding to your funding or some, uh, say he'll ask you for some research proposal or something like that. So you will get acquainted towards all the setup. So it is always advisable start beforehand rather than just waiting for your thesis to submit it or your defense to hell and then you'll start then it will take another six seven eight a year also and it is very frustrating to you know have no funding after phd i can understand it i am also from normal very humble background so i know that funding is really a big thing so please start as early as possible okay and then uh just you can message me if you really want something more to uh, know about it but this can be a approach try to apply on the positions which are already there okay because the chances are higher and then of course simultaneously you can keep uh, writing to the professors suppose the big guys in your field you can you can always try your luck there okay maybe he'll like your work he'll he'll give you an opportunity to talk and maybe things can work out for you. Maybe the big schools and big guys, it, it can, it may work, right? And then the other thing is, I'll always ask, this, these are one, one, two, and the third can be, there is Marie Curie fellows, Fellowship, you already know. There is Commonwealth Fellowship, there is Newton Fellowship, okay? Then there is Fulbright Fellowship. So you should know that what are the opening dates, what are the closing dates, you can start searching and sometimes you know professor is interested in you but since he don't have that you know funding or support yes. an international student so sometimes he'll ask for that okay the 
even you can also suggest sometimes if professor is not aware and maybe because he is too busy right so suppose you got a good uh, reply from a us professor okay but then he said see i don't have funding to support you then in that conversation you should bring a point that see full bright uh, fellowships are there and i think the opening is this and this so can you be my you know advisor or something like that yeah yeah one quick question are in full brights are they meant as an exchange program like while you are enrolled and not to pursue that my confusion yeah so uh, this is a uh, lot of people have it so full bright has different different stages it is for master student okay. also masters exchange okay it is for phd exchange also it is for post doc also so you have to see where you fit in so there it is full bright is not just that it is for only exchange program it is not just for it for okay. master okay. so you can fetch your funding for post doctoral thing as a full bright fellow also and same goes for dard also okay so the marie curie supports phd also post doc also so these big funding agencies they are open for all of things since we are sometimes very you know we are very familiar with the only the exchange program we thought of oh this is meant to be yes, that okay yes. and for post doc and phd's if somebody want to pursue phd also urexus is one of the site for uh, because that site usually post lot of vacancies which are already there which are already funded projects which you will you know you don't have to bring your own funding it's just that you can straight away apply so it's a very good <laughs> website you can and it's it's it will post all the jobs they are in europe right so you can have lot of countries and one more thing i want to bring it please don't be very specific to country that you want to do postdoc only in germany it is very hard sometimes if you don't get reply you will feel very bad about it it's not about you maybe the things are not working for that particular country so please keep your horizons and the scope broaden okay just apply everywhere in a good good institute of course under good professor of course so you have to keep on just focus on the team or the group not just as a country oh you just want to target germany you just want to target us it's a bad approach like it's my personal suggestion maybe you can defer it but keep your because it is easier for you to fetch a position if you are you know scope are broadened so this is one point and what other thing you have Yeah, just second, second and last question. How different is industrial and institute post postdocs? So, a uh, very good question. Again, I just addressed it yesterday. So, I in the uh, in earlier talk also I have mentioned that you should be very clear what sort of postdoc you want to do. Believe me, people are not very clear about it. See, if you want to make a career in industry, I usually advise people to please try to. They are highly competitive. Although the postdoctoral positions are competitive, but what I'll say, if you really wanted to make a career in industry, it is advisable. Please fetch industrial postdoctoral positions. There are they are there. It's not. It's just that you don't know it. Bayer Foundation is there. There there are a lot of big pharmas. who have that positions for you is just that you have to apply it and i as far as i remember there is one program igst this is indo german science and technology something like that but it is more specific to industry kind of work so suppose if you are gaining experience of like four five post doctoral in academia and then you move into industry believe me maybe you will get you know you'll start at lower package because industry is looking for the people who have the experience already in industry uh your you know if if suppose if you are a fresh phd and you just did one year of post doc or something like that and other guy from in academy and he has done five six years it won't you know that years doesn't really matter to industry i have talked to lot of people over here who are there in industry running their pharma companies they really want industrial experience so if you if you really wanted to go into industry please make sure that you will gather industrial experience after phd not the academic experience academic experiences are counted if you really wanted to get into academia okay there are some good uh government like we call it federal agencies are there suppose here nih is there and it can be other thing so that is good really good uh because it will give you a lot of different kind of exposure also it will uh, tell you like how the federal agencies work and something like that but and it it can be you know uh 
like you can switch to industry and to academia but you you should keep in mind where is your what is your next goal do you want to come back into in university kind of a setup do you want to make career in industry and choose postdoc according to that not randomly just because you yes of course you are not getting it suppose you didn't get any you tried hard but you didn't get into any of the industry postdoctoral position right so it is good to join any university because then you will get experience right and then you will uh, frame a lot of networks and connections and since you got the you know different country exposure you will be better in your knowledge and everything so it's okay to start whatever you are getting but it is advisable if you know these things beforehand it is good to you know opt for that which is which you really like it thank you so much yeah, thanks yeah. so any other on post doc like let's first finish this post doc thing any other people who are applying or facing difficulty or something like that or have any other question you can unmute yourself and then you can speak or if if you are not comfortable you can even post on the chat okay so i think if i am not pronouncing your name wrongly it is lubna who said i am pursuing masters in pharmaceutical science i want to do phd tell me the process okay and then another question was this is deepthi i am recent msc graduate from university of delhi i am preparing for the entrance exam in india i am interested in the field of bioinformatics and genomics okay so since it is for phd first i'll say that uh, are you open to both of the things like doing phd abroad or doing phd in india because the uh, procedure or the approach is very different so can you tell hello ma'am hello ma'am uh, ma'am uh, excuse me uh, i want to do abroad not in india so i but i don't know the procedure i fully yet i am still pursuing masters in pharmaceutical quality assurance and doing my thesis work in pharmaceutics that is product development and formulation but um, uh, i i also want to know whether to look for only pharmaceutics or i can also maybe i can also look for other will it be uh, good for me to look for other areas in pharma in you know pharmaceuticals okay so i missed that point because maybe uh, both of you speak at the same time uh, you said that you are interested in uh, doing phd abroad or in india ma'am in abroad in abroad okay so uh, first of all i'll say regarding your question that since you are from pharmaceutical background can you change the uh, discipline you can do it uh, i have like with my like i have colleagues from pharmaceutical backgrounds and then they are now working in to drug discovery so it depends on you like how what you have studied so far and what can you bring to the table okay because suppose if you really wanted to pursue this drug discovery so good knowledge of chemistry is needed some knowledge of biology is needed so if you have studied these subjects then yeah you like you can do it but this is only you who can decide that nobody else can tell you but it is it is a doable thing i know a lot of people doing that so it is not very out of the box you can certainly do it the other thing is if you really wanted to do phd abroad see uh it is good to have publication but i am again saying because most of the people say that when i say okay if you are uh, if you want to do phd abroad just start applying then they say ma'am we don't have papers papers are not required see you will be doing phd so the professors really don't you know want you to that have a publication re uh, record beforehand so if you if you will be having that why would you will be coming to a phd program right so please uh, ignore that myth you what you can do is there as i already mentioned your excess is one good site dubna where you can find already fully funded phd positions you just have to apply you have to maybe submit your a good detailed cv where you have to submit your motivational letter cover letter that's all and it's they have given you the email of say professor or something who are taking in charge of that they'll ask for four or five documents from you and on the basis of that you will probably get shortlisted or and may get a interview call okay so what you can do is yeah one thing is 
try to make a research proposal i know it's it's really tough especially the people who are at your stage like what topic to decide how to go about it it's it's a big you know uh, challenge so please uh, try to address it step by step break it like okay first you want to broadly like broadly okay this is the zone i want to get in maybe since you are you are really interested into you know pursuing phd so you you might have looked into some of the labs of course this much homework you should do what what sort of lab you want to get in what sort of work they are doing okay can you think something similar or can you propose some a problem this uh, come up with a good research problem and then try to address it it should not be very full proof because nobody can do it believe me but yes you should be very quanted with the procedure and with the take that how to write a proposal and it can be very basic also it's okay but uh, keep a habit of you know uh, developing that skill sometimes people will ask you sometimes people won't ask you but uh, suppose what if they'll ask you so you should you should be prepared with that question okay so yes like good documents can work for you so there are already funded positions you can look for dard also it is strictly based to germany okay and the fulbrights also and there is commonwealth for uk also so these are the things which are already funded now the other approach as the i have already mentioned for the postdoc other can be you can directly write to the professor and you know discuss are there any because sometimes universities also have it i'll come to other things like since how the university thing will although i am not a right person to comment too much on to it because i did my phd from india but i can definitely connect with a lot of people who have done it who have crossed that path and are may be helpful to you right so uh, what i'm trying to say is that uh, you can email the professor sometimes they'll you know reply and then they'll ask you to have conversation and if the yeah yeah my question is like what to write to uh, professors okay. draft type email like yeah so uh, that is also very important question although i have already addressed in previous session so one thing is see if you directly just write now i am this and this i really wanted to do phd under your lab uh, here is my attached see, these kind of emails doesn't work too well believe me most of the time they are into trash You, in your mail you really have to specify why you are interested although it should not be very long but what i'm trying to say is very in a crisp format you have to really you know uh, fetch an attention of the professor that why that particular lab why that particular topic what can you bring it in so try to address these questions sometimes it can be difficult but it is not too difficult if you really you know and uh before applying uh, replying to a say professor or something like that please uh, read their web page or you know lab group whatever the page they are having as a book what they are doing what recent publication they have done it you don't have to read whole of the publications but you should know the idea okay they are publishing say in photochemistry say oh drug discovery or medicinal chemistry okay what sort of like if they are into medicinal chemistry so what so what sort of targets they are you know uh, approaching is are they approaching the neurological based you know uh, projects or it is some cancer based projects or something like that so you can actually uh, build some some background knowledge about that topic if it is lacking and you are just only replying with the you know this layman kind of thing i don't think so that will work only the personal emailing only works when you are uh, you know capable to fetch the professor's you know attention so please be very specific like why are you interested or you can start with it recently you read this research paper and this is the main thing that drew your attention and you are really wanted to you know take it forward and you can you know uh, propose something so what i'm trying to say is make it something concrete something personal something relating to you and the professor or to the lab or maybe you like something about their lab maybe the the lab is too interdisciplinary somebody working in say i'm quoting my areas but you can just 
understand that maybe catalysis, total synthesis, medicinal work, some biology, de assay development, like a lot of people do it, people do it. It's not that people don't do it, but if they are doing it, so you can just mention that it since it is highly interdisciplinary and your background is this, and then you want to upgrade your skills, you want to learn some assay development or something like that. So this can be one of the good reasons that why you are interested in his or her lab. So what I'm trying to say, this is you only you, you have to uh, see like, why are you interested in that lab and try to bring that on the table of the professor so that he can actually have that serious conversation with you. And at least can he give you a chance to have conversation in, you know, like the Zoom or something like that. And once you get it, believe me, if, if you are a decent candidate, you can drive that converse, uh, conversation to something meaningful for you. So that's my personal uh, thing. So ma'am, uh, we should start with like, why are we interested and then move forward, like telling us, so, telling them the, our achievements, right? Can we tell them our achievements? Like I am a university topper or I have done this, this work. Uh, I usually discourage it because uh, that can, uh, will be in your CV. So what you can do is the basic format will look like, like, introduce yourself like you're a master student or a PhD student from this this university and in particular this discipline okay then you can start it that you are following his lab or something you read a paper or something like that like how do you get to know about him just provide some inference some some reference like okay you uh, watched his talk or you met him in a conference or you read his paper or something so that it turns it gives a very personal touch to the male okay and then you can what do you actually like about the professor like the work of the professor some 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 study or something like that which has fascinated you to you know pursue that field like, write that and then you can say that you are interested in pursuing that field and this is the expertise. But you, suppose if the, if the discipline is somewhat different. So you can say that I have these core expertise knowledge. Say you, uh, you get to uh, have that some skills on some instrumentation, NMR or something like that. Something like XYZ. Okay. And that instrument, uh, that skill is actually may help in that next field. So you can mention that, that you have this core discipline, that core skills with you. You are ready to upgrade them. You can, you are ready and flexible to, you know, uh, grow your skills in some other disciplines. But then with this core expertise, you can be an asset. So like this, you have to frame and regarding this, your achievement, of course, you can, in the end, you can say that a detailed CV has been attached for your reference and something like that. If you straight away write your mail, write uh, like, um, uh, I'm a university topper and something like that. Usually it doesn't seem too pleasing to me if I am the reviewer, believe me. Of course, I'll appreciate it like you are a hardworking student, but I need something more, not just the academic achievements or you are the topper or something like that. Don't take me wrong, but this is the way you should pursue, right? So maybe you can highlight that thing in your CV and please say it loudly, like your CV should say it loudly, your achievements, whatever awards you got it, whatever positions are there, you hold it. It's, it's brilliant. But keep it to CV, male should be very, uh, you know, uh, personalized in a sense of that. Why are you interested in that work? That's my suggestion to you. Okay, ma'am. And ma'am, you said the name of the website, Eurista, right? Uh, I can write on the chat. Eurix is, is the site. I can straight away write so that people can get it. Eurix is one, Dad is one, check out for Commonwealth. Check out for uh, what else? Uh, this Newton. It's also very prestigious, Newton International. And it is very uh, good also. It will give you the flexibility, Newton International Fellowships. Then there is, uh, okay, Fulbright is there. Then there are some specific, some Australia based stuff at Queensland. I forgot the name. I'll, I'll share with you guys what else. Mm. Yeah, Marie Curie is there. Okay, people know it. So, and I think this is the the biggest funding stuff. And there is one more. Uh, I'll share you the more. I this they just slipped out of my mind. 
I think there were another one question in the chat. Somebody from bioinformatics. Uh, Shweta has also. Just a minute. Let me read. Okay, so uh, uh, Deepti, okay. So Deepti, you uh, are preparing for entrances and you really wanted to pursue PhD in India. Is that so? Hi, yes, I am Deepti. Okay, okay. So you are uh, like, you got your master's? Yeah, I completed my master's in 2022. So my, I'll just sum it up very quickly. So it was like the peak COVID time. So it was all online. It was like a major chaos. I completed my two years master's in less than 1.5 years oh. and all of that. So there was no time to prepare for entrances. So oh. I completed my master's around some time, uh, this time only a year back, 2022. Okay, okay. So uh, so what was your question? So meanwhile, yeah. So in the meantime, in this one year, I have, did a, I have done a six-month project position at a CSIR lab. And... Uh, now I want to focus on my entrances, but I feel like if I like solely focus on my entrances, there will be a huge gap on my CV for six months, which I'll not be able to explain when I sit for interviews. So instead, I sh should I just like uh, enroll in project positions and side by side do my entrance prep, which is kind of difficult. Yeah, so Deepti, for this, I can say is, uh, so you are, uh, you'll be writing that CSIR exam, is that so? Yes, yes, sir. yes. Sir. So are you trying to uh, manage your funding through other sources, inspire us there, uh, gate fellowships are there? Uh, yeah, I'm focusing on them too. Oh, yeah, then, then it's fine. Okay, regarding your yeah. question, should you join? Uh, I'll say that try to join that, if, if, if you really feel that you are, you won't be able to justify the gaps. So join a professor and tell him that you are preparing for, there are good professors also, believe me. So you can mention that you really wanted to learn some of the skills. Guys, can you please, please un, uh, mute yourself and unmute only when you are uh, speaking because it is creating a lot of problems. So Deepti, I, I was saying that um, you can apply to some of the pos uh, project positions and then in the conversation, you can bring that point that since you are really interested into research, you really wanted to do PhD. That is why you will be writing some of the mandatory exams. And uh, is the uh, will the professor be okay with it? Like bring, I'll always say that, please talk to the professor. We as, you know, our, our upbringing is that sometimes we bridge, we have this much of gap. We don't tell what we are pursuing or, but it's not a very good idea. And some people are really supported. Some prof are really supported. If they can, they can tell, okay, you can work from this to this. And then after that, you focus on your, I know some of the professors do like that. So you have to uh, you should join that lab because your currently your focus is not just learning some skills or say some you know lab work your your focus is mainly on fetching a phd position and for that you really need to crack some entrance exam right so for that focus more on that and bring that point to the professor and then you can and some and believe me people support it because they really know the situation so join that lab where the professor is supportive so that you can have balance of both. If you will join a professor who really just wanted to focus on your project and then grill you, say you'll have to come at 8 and then you're leaving lab at suppose 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Guys, you'll be so tired that you cannot, you know, focus on your exam and then whole of your purpose is defeated. You might gain the exposure, say six months or say one year of post project positions, but then you you are not able to do what you wanted to do right so make a balance out of it and it's your discretion it's not the professor's discretion it's your discretion that you want to join a lab which can give that perfect balance for you and there are the labs it's just that you re really need to search it hard so that's my suggestion okay. will it work for you that really helps yeah yeah thank you yeah. and i have one another doubt yeah 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 tell me so you talked about industrial postdoctoral positions. I have read about a very few industrial PhD positions in India. But do you think like that kind of a thing would work in India if I were to go in my field for that thing? 
Uh, yeah, thank you for bringing that point, Deepthi, because when I joined, the scenario was very different. Uh, when I completed my uh, master's from IIT Roorkee, I was uh, very much inclined towards research. So after that, I thought, okay, like one of my professors said, Anu, apply for this PMRF, because that in that time, it was very new concept. Okay, so this is Prime Minister, you know, research fellowship, you, you must be aware of that. So at that time, there the mandatory the you know uh, the requirement was that you should have some industry partner with you some some far something like that and since my professor was not very active in collaboration or something like that so that thing didn't happen but now what i want to bring it in that now like in each department there are some set of seats already like they they wanted to give PMRF and there I know a lot of people who will apply. The chances nowadays are quite high. A lot of my juniors have this PMRF fellowship and it is like quite high, 90,000, okay, 80, 90,000. So it's like a good job. So what I'm trying to say, once you cleared some exams, say CSI or something like that, get into some good institute and try to get involved in not just institute, the prof, matters really matters believe me if you are joining say top institute say iits or iscs or icers and if the professor is not good i'll suggest join a professor who is good but say in some regional university not very where the facilities is not there but say Delhi university some prestigious universities gnu or something like that my point is that uh try to find a right guide for you okay and what i'm trying to say is after joining within i think one one and a half year the the cap is that within one one and a half year you have to apply for this pmrf uh fellowship where you have to submit a proposal and now there is no stringent rule that you really need a you know industry player but of course since it is it, the fellowship aims to you know bring uh, the academy and industry as a bridge so chances are higher that already some of the industry players want to get involved into it and that is why the whole title of or the the project is there and they just want a, a research fellow to apply and something like that now the things are quite different so look for it i usually suggest those who are who will be entering into this phd try for this pmrf because one it is prestigious it will give you some good exposure and it is like highly paid and then after that suppose if you want to pursue that in ind industry on an academy it, it will be a feather on your cap so try that so first first get involved and then uh, talk after you know after, and even in interview okay in interview and say suppose uh, some professor has already interested in taking you then you can bring that point that you are really interested in uh, pmrf funding and something like that will the professor help you guys please don't think that it is only professor who's taking you think other way like we usually don't do that but it is really important that you will think that way because you have to spend five, six years, say seven years. You don't know where, when you will be able to complete your PhD. So that many years has to be invested with a guy. Okay. And if whether he is really supporting you, so you can bring that you are really interested into it. Can he help you in that? Like what's his plan for you? So talk openly. It's no harm. It's no harm. So approach that way. And it's doable and the people with good mindset will appreciate it. Believe me, if somebody is not appreciating it, that means it's a red flag that you can think whether you really wanted to still go for him or not. Okay, that really helps. Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Ma'am, uh, which is better, like uh, doing PhD from Germany or US? Uh, uh, I didn't get your question, Lubna. What was uh, what your question? Ma'am, which uh, country is better for P uh, PhD, Germany or US? Uh, it's, it's a very, I'll say it's not a good question, Lubna, because uh, it's not the country which decides that this is best or it is the work which you want to get involved. Say, suppose some particular field and even some particular university is really good into it. But then since you think, oh, US is too fascinating and then you join some random lab, which is not very, very good in that particular area. So your purpose is defeated. At the end, only work matters. At the end, 
after say PhD or even masters or say even postdoc, if you have done sufficient good quality of work, you will be hired. It does. It matters from which like okay, it can give you some slight edge over something, but it won't you know totally replace your work. So just look for the labs. Say if if the lab is you know publishing good papers, jacks or something like that, and but you are getting uh some offer from a U.S. university where you'll find it. Oh, it's a mediocre kind of paper. The lab is quite slow also. So will it be a good idea to join that lab just because it's U.S.? So think over that. So it's very hard to compare countries. I'll say compare labs. Okay, ma'am. Thank yes. you. Any other question in the chat? Could you please? Uh, I have posted in the messages some of the fellowships. If Lubna, I think you uh, comment. Yes, ma'am. Ma so, I didn't receive it. Uh, oh, why? Okay. Everyone in the meeting, I'll again write. Mixes, art fellowships, Commonwealth. I forgot the exact name, but there is some fellowship from Queensland University also. And yeah, in Europe, Eurexis will take care of all, like because there are different different universities, different different funding agencies are there. So if you want to search positions in Europe, I'll suggest you to look for Eurexis. It's a beautiful website. Uh, any other questions on PhD postdoc? Ma'am, I have a few questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, like you mentioned that uh, while applying for a PhD abroad, if we directly write to a professor, uh, uh, so like uh, I am a pediatrician and my area of interest is critical care, uh, mm -hmm. like pediatric critical care, pediatric ICU. And so should I focus on labs or research groups that are targeting this particular area or should I target labs uh, like for example I'm interested in multiomics or bioinformatics or systems physiology something like this mm -hmm. I'm not yet sure because I don't have much lab experience uh, but something like this so should I focus on my disease of interest or should I focus on the technique of interest like are labs willing to uh, work on dis disease that I am interested in? Uh, like, for example, I know of a person, uh, he's Dr. Akhilesh Pandey. Uh, he, he, he has his uh, proteomics lab at Mayo Clinic and he has an institute of bioinformatics in Bangalore. Uh, that's where I used to go for brief summer trainings while I was in MBBS. So I wrote to him and you know he kind of apply, uh, allowed me to visit. So I know that he's a very good mentor and I would like to work with him for a PhD, but he works purely on cancer. He does not work on critical care. So uh, that's what I want to know. Like, should I focus on labs that are working on my disease of interest or should I focus on the technique for a PhD? Okay, good question. So I'll say that... Uh you can prioritize okay because both setting of the lab exists in the world right so you can you can prioritize whether you want to your core you know a desire is of doing phds for some specific disease or something like that so you can focus on that and regarding this bioinformatics and stuff like that i'll say that 
say if you have different background and that is what stopping you that whether you'll able to fetch a position in that because you wanted to i think make a little bit of drift if i'm if i got your question right right uh yes like i still want to be a clinician uh but basically uh have that dual career of a physician scientist mm -hmm. uh, that kind of a setup yet does not exist in india uh, like clinicians are only doing clinical research and then basic scientists are only doing so i exactly don't know where my future will be uh but this is something i've always been interested in i kind of went ahead with an md uh, because i wanted to practice in india and I, I do enjoy being a clinician but somewhere uh, that idea that i want to find those answers in my lab that still exists uh, so I, I like i'm still struggling with how to make i can work. understand your situation really well because to be very honest and in india uh, these things doesn't exist right it's it's very narrow and maybe you won't land up in a good institute but if if i'll suggest if you know the region is not very you know constrained to you uh, i'll suggest you to come to a better country believe me like i'll say get the exposure maybe you will work later on in india or something like that but if you really wanted to have a very good exposure of you know md and you know the both both the disciplines parallel i think mm -hmm. the country like us or something like that will give you a very very good edge like and then i know uh, there is i forgot the name i'm very bad at you know remembering the name there is one senior lady i uh, she did something like that she like uh m she was mbba then she put md and then she wanted to do research parallelly with you know uh, these things so she got the training from us now she is in you like working with some of the agency of un united nations so what i'm trying to say is she got because she was also i i saw her talk and there was i attended some of the interactive session with her that is why i got to know about her journey so she struggled very hard to have that balance in india it is not there so since i i, I was not even aware of the institute which you, you were mentioning that it was giving you that uh, platform but i'll say that if you really wanted to make good career specifically in this try to apply abroad india will be very restricted place later on you can come back with very good skills and then you can establish something and then you can you know and i'll uh, suggest you to reach out some people in uh, say in aims or some some big 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 uh, institutes they can guide you very well because i as i say that our discipline doesn't synchronize very well so i'm not a very good person on commenting lot of things i don't want to direct you something which i'm not very good at because it you may take very wrong advices from me but yes one thing i'm really sure sure because i have seen people i have met people who wanted to bring that balance to their life but it is not possible in india so if you can think of you know pursuing studies abroad and then if you really wanted to settle in india or something like that you can come back work uh, but that's my take and you can do that it's not here it's very common we usually have a lot of scientists doing that nih is full of people like you but in india it's it's very different because in india sometimes it's very rigid the entrance like they they are quite rigid over it be a doctor and then so it is i can understand the situation but my personal take will be try to fetch positions abroad if you really want to do good good research and good make your career good out of it mm -hmm. Yeah, that really helps. Just one last thing. If yeah. it's slightly off topic, but uh, as an introvert, I um, find networking in conferences quite difficult. And now that I'm going to Lindau, uh, and already I think most of the people that come there are PhD and postdocs. Not much purely clinicians. Um, uh, but any advice if you would have 
uh, for Lindau specifically and for introverts for networking? Sure. Like, believe me, I am also very selectively social. I'm not like if you put me into a group and then I can start chit-chatting. It's not like that. So I can understand your personality. Uh, one thing I really wanted to mention is that maybe from India or something like that, because it is dedicated to medicine, right? This year's uh, meeting. So mm -hmm. from Indian side, you will see only PhDs and postdoc, but I'm quite sure that you'll meet people like with the discipline of this MD and, you know, PhDs and something like that. And especially the professors, I'm telling you, most of the professors will be like MD, PhD, because those who want to make career out of medicine, okay, here also in NIH, it's a federal agency, right? So most of time, it's like if somebody is at higher rank, high, like it's like I'm saying 95% chances are it's MD, PhD. So okay. try to, uh, yeah, and then all these confusion, it's a very good chance, very, you know, you can say it, you really have a very good chance of networking to those people in terms of you can bring those questions to that. And believe me, that that meeting is meant to be, you know, to talk or it is not, you won't be just sitting, getting lectures. It's not that, it's just networking. Since you're introvert, I'll say that, you can just sometimes if say some so some Nobel laureate have given um you know short talk and it is not very really too much academically it's just their journey or something like that so it, you will get to know like so maybe something will you know something has inspired you or something you lo uh, like about that talk or something after that over coffee or something it is it will be very open open setting believe me so you can just go to that um. Uh, scientist or some professor and then say that you really like it and then you can introduce yourself and believe me if you will think that it will be too awkward how will I start communication or something like that conversation but people really wanted to have that they are waiting for you to tell something about you then you can just start I'm this and this and then I'm interested in making career in this this field and then can you guide can you tell me something so put some common questions and the conversation they'll drive believe me okay. and uh, regarding you especially I'll highly encourage you to please talk to the professors or the laureates there because they are from the background which you want to make career in right because okay. yeah because I know they'll be 70% will be MD PhD I'm quite sure if I'll be wrong please let me know after the meeting that ma'am you were wrong <laughs> Yeah, but I'm quite sure about it that uh, most of the those who have made good careers in medicine, they are MD, PhDs. So it's a very good chance for you. Just start with your introduction and the, the your interest and then you can ask. And even you can say that in India, these kind of setups are not there. Can you suggest and believe me, they'll, they'll guide you as their student because that meeting is meant for that. You will have a lot of science talks and science walk like you'll have. Yes. I think you have already applied for that. that I, I have applied for it. I've uh, applied it with the William Keeling. He is also an MD PhD. Okay. So um, I have why. met William Keeling once. So yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. So what I'm I was saying that uh, since you will be having and it will be a very small group, say 10, 12 people with one laureate. Okay. So he wants you because you know in a group it is very difficult for a laureate also to keep on saying keep on saying keep on saying and you have one one and a half two hours with them three hours sometimes because if you will be I got the science walk opportunity so we were walking all through that island and then we sat in a restaurant and had coffee so it should be very I ask a lot of questions and it can be very very common so he told me about his his wife or uh, both their careers because they both were MD PhDs so it's a very good opportunity try to bring some basic questions whatever doubt you have it just just ask for it and then you can bring it that you're struggling with this dilemma in your home country you are not having this kind of setup maybe they'll tell you because these these guys are big they know like how things work and they can guide you much more than what I can do it for you so okay. use that opportunity I'll say and even if you're introvert, start with the basic. This much you can say, no? oh, I, li I, I like your, this thing. I'm really inspired by your basic, basic thing. It's okay. Nobody's judging you. Nobody's judging you there. Even if you utter something wrong, it's okay. 
nobody is judging just start with your introduction that i am this 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 i am from india and then then put your questions and they are there to address your questions the meeting for one week is just to address students question so keep that thing in mind nobody is judging you there okay thank okay. you yeah thank you guys any other questions for the day i think sure is there something else? i um, silly doubts are always welcome i like silly doubts i am currently this and join uh, since 5 6 since there are age of the post doc in india i would have a big chance of staying in canada might be able to just one two one or two post doc oh so age so i think in uh, entering into academia the age limit is is 35 although it's not it's it's bad rule i personally feel it but your concern and your question is not silly at all of course we we have to keep these things in mind so i'll say that don't count years first of all uh, because maybe you you'll be the one who'll be finishing phd i i'm not showing you the dreams okay maybe if you land up in some under some good professor you can finish it off say four five years although it is rare but i'll say it happens i have seen people from isc bangalore uh completing their phd in four and a half years five years okay even i know one senior who did but it was some exceptional thing the professor was getting retired so she did in 3 years also but if you are and in abroad it is a usual practice say in australia or germany or something like that people usually get their phd's in 3 3 and a half years 4 years because they don't have the that coursework or something like that so i think yes these and sometimes it may fetch to 7 years also so it's your personalized journey i'll say like it's your journey nobody can comment on it nobody can predict the future now coming to the very important question you said that uh, there will be only i think see after getting into academia if suppose if you did very good work that is why i'm saying choose guide wisely i did some like i'll say that choose guide wisely he can make your career and break your career that is what i have to say so suppose if you come out with very good work after phd okay and then only one one and a half year or say two year of post doc is sufficient to land into some you know some say some new iits or iits that is why i keep on emphasizing only work matters work matters your guide matters so don't count years and sometimes suppose if you uh, did phd of lay like, four years but your work is of not that great and then even i have seen people doing uh, post doc for five years six years seven years of post doc people i know and they are still not into academia so it's not just that if you'll complete two years or say seven years of post doc and then you are you know and suppose if you have the years in your hand you are good to go in academia no if you have work you can go so focus more on work less on years and i'll say that uh, don't worry too much about it even if you are able to get the post doctoral experience of Two years, say two, okay, two to three. Years. Why I'm saying it's sometimes the new IIT is it is there that the hiring is of two years, okay, grade two assistant professor, grade one assistant professor. Even after PhD, also you can, if your work is too fascinating, you can directly apply to the faculty position. You will be hired at grade two, and then later on the experience, you will be promoted to grade one. Within three years, you will be promoted. So there are ways out to address it. So it's not. to see getting into academia is really tough tough i won't you know make some fancy things oh you will easily get it we we really know the uh, the dark reality of it it is really tough lot of things matters influential guides publication good academic record many things matters but still like whatever the experience i have i'll tell you you can have a good amount of say if your work is good and if your professor is good like if you did some phd under some big guy or something like that so it really matters in india uh, don't focus too much on to it even if you fetch good amount of say one two years and your work is good your terms are good you can easily get into postdoc or like the faculty positions so 
try to focus try to get into the lab which is you know too good to is is good like don't just randomly join it just because you really wanted to get into phd matlab your your first focus will be getting into a good lab if it is not happening okay you can start with a mediocre lab or something don't just enter into a toxic lab that's what i can say Uh, just turn my questions out, please. Make it in the for course that can help us. We have to make a choice in second year between the nanotechnology for specification. What would be better? Can you uh, come on mic, Aprajita, if I am not pronouncing your name wrong? It's okay to speak? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, I'm a first year biotech student. Okay. And I wanted to know how can we use LinkedIn to uh, have good connections or maybe it can help in our uh, future in this biotechnology. Yeah, a very good question of bringing LinkedIn into uh, the conversation because I have recently, like I'll be conducting a session in NIH, like how to make a good, you know, uh, use LinkedIn as a tool to enhance your career or something like that. See, LinkedIn is very important, very important in terms of like, since you are first year student. So if you start from this day, I'm not saying you'll have a lot of fancy things to show, but you can see people good um, good good people over there doing something related to your field and then you'll get to know more more and more about it so and then since you are a very you are at very beginning of your uh, thing so what you can do is you can try to follow and try to uh, connect with the people who are there with your field say some university professors say some people from industry some people doing their own startup or something like that and then in between, suppose if you really need some guidance, you can message them. Good people will always respond. Even if you're not responding, please try to understand they might be very busy. But some way or the other, you can you can see what sort of activities are, uh, you know, they are doing. And it is very important. The LinkedIn comes into the play that you will get to know a lot of opportunities if you are out of it, you, you don't know, like what is going on in your field, what is what is the hot topics or say some conferences or some 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 programs or something like so it is always good to invest some time in linkedin a couple of minutes of your day on linkedin to see what people are doing it slowly and slowly since you're very beginner i'll say just try to follow some good people in your field then see what they are publishing try to, if some professor is posting some their you know recent uh, publication so you can have a look because it's the recent one. So and if he has published, that means it's kind of a hot topic. So you can have a look at it. What sort of research? So you'll be very upgraded. Okay, this is happening. This is happening. Say, this is happening. So initially for initial years, that is what you can use LinkedIn for. When you go for, say, suppose some conference, then you can, you know, mention that, okay, you you saw that post or something like that so people you know in networking what is very important is that okay the conversation should be formal of course it, it needs to be formal but then you have to bring little bit of you know personal touch to it so that you know we are human beings social animals so what i'm trying to say is that if if we talk just like machines that conversation is not very effective. Okay, you just say oh, this, 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 and it, it doesn't have any personal touch. I'll forget it. If you'll mention that, okay, you read this publication or you saw that post or you have met all, you have already met. Okay, like what I'm trying to say, bring a little bit of personalized touch into the conversation because personalized things that person and you can remember it for long and maybe in future suppose if you are if you did your like you completed your master's okay and then you wanted some position say in phd or even pharma or something like that so then maybe that person can be an asset to you 
because since you are in light conversation the person knows you a little bit then maybe he can guide you very well because the person the people which we really know we really wanted to help them okay no 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 do this this is a bad idea this is a good idea so this is how networking it's networking doesn't mean to just to follow somebody and okay just to say uh, very formally that's not networking i I'll, i'll personally say try to stay in touch with the person maybe after and it's not that you have to daily message him it's not that you have to monthly message him it's not that year but yeah like sometime okay you you started some conversation you can okay you discuss something then there is a gap but then you really need assistance then the person knows oh we have already talked with the person so th- this is a cyclic kind of a thing so you can keep on stay in touch yet you don't have to bother that per- person a much so that is how networking helps whenever you need some suggestion or say you need you are applying for a position and the person is already there in that organization so you can mention that uh, can you tell how the interviews goes can you share some insights it it really helps even in us in india things are somewhat different but what i am trying to say in us after a degree or say bachelor's or masters or say phd most of the jobs are fetched just because of networking somebody is already there somebody have interacted framed a good relation and then they'll say that okay um, i got an interview call or i'll be applying this or is there any vacancy and then they can say, talk over a zoom or something like that and then the person can guide you a bit how to face it usually it happens so networking is even in in government jobs also fd and all that stuff so already people try to approach if they know somebody and then that personalized touches there and then of course since you know how things work what are the probable questions and what what you have to focus on your presentation what not what to mention and how what to highlight if you'll get some good amount of decent you know guidance it is easier to fetch a you know job usually i'm telling you this is the us culture people get their jobs by networking so that's the value of networking and networking is the way which i have already demonstrated it should be like that and since you are very at the very initial stage so you should keep that thing in mind so build slowly get familiar with the people around you people doing good work in your field and then later stages just ping them up okay uh, we talk on that particular issue or something like that uh, this is your future goal how to pursue it basic basic questions you can talk and people will respond nobody is that busy but yes people are busy so maybe sometimes they'll reply you in very short sometimes they won't find time to reply so it's okay but maintain that thing that okay you are there in their contact list that is what i'm trying to say thank you ma'am for that advice ma'am one more question that we have a choice in like second year that we have to choose between uh, drug designing as and uh, nanobiotechnology uh, for the specialization so which one would be better what's your interest i'll say they both are very interesting so i couldn't uh, choose one maybe you can just uh, discuss with me what would be better you know it better i think uh see uh for me also it's a difficult thing to if i'll be in your shoe it will be of course it's a difficult difficult choice but yes some of the parameters you can consider is like you can uh hey, are you thinking to build a career build a research career or something like that in uh nano technology or nano field because there are a lot of different applications of you know nanoparticles or something like that and if if that is not your focus and say you want i don't know uh, if you are familiar with chemistry so suppose if you want to make some small molecule drug later in stages or something like it is really tough tough i'm 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 agreeing with you but what you can do is you can uh, look into the you can read some of the papers if you can uh or you can briefly watch some videos like how the research is going into this nano field or how because drug designing na in this field it is like different different there is like dna encoded libraries are they are focused on you know like which can be 
therapeutic or something like that so drug designing is somewhat they are not directly they are related to nanotechnology but it is like that nanoparticles can be used as some del a drug delivery agent so the fields are little bit different but they still have that interface so you should gain expertise over a field and it's not that you cannot change it later what i'm trying to say is which interests you a bit more do you want to study nanoparticles like do, does this that actually uh, you know fascinates you uh, or it's just the drug design like broadly you 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 want to learn more about dr drug designing whether it be a small molecule whether it be you know macromolecules or whether it will be uh, say dna encoded libraries based so this is what you have to you know come up from within that uh, do you, are you really interested into the field because they are somewhat different nano field and this field is slightly different although both have applications in biomedical uh, field so this is like you have to really decide that i uh, read more on a uh, nanoparticles nanoparticles as uh, drug delivery agents or the you know they they have a lot of applications and materials and so this is uh, like this this can be solely your call like what uh what expertise you want to have it and believe me uh it, it is not that suppose if you took nano um like what in, what was the course name drug designing and nanobiotechnology Nano, nanobiotechnology so it's not that you because it's the bachelor's level right right so it's not that if you get into this uh nanobiotechnology and you cannot come back to this drug designing it's not that it's just the basic they'll providing you a course which will give you more understanding of that particular field so you can take it whatever you actually have a slightly edge over both of like among both of them that is what i can say read little bit about both the fields and see what actually interests you more because ma'am both of them are very interlinked they both can be used in like in the at the same time so that was very hard for me to choose what can be because i have read some of the research papers on nanoparticles for example the exotoxicity uh, like it was on c elegans and uh, based on zinc and titanium ions and uh, drug designing is also uh, like i have searched many uh, videos on youtube that is also very interesting like how we develop uh, the drug from very scratch like molecules then uh, building up according to the need what we want to you know, make at last so uh, somewhere i also read that nanotechnology is also linked with drug designing so i i was a bit confused in that yeah, that's true uh, i totally agree with you because both of them will at some point if you you know pursue keep on pursuing this career they'll they'll come to that inter intersection so it's not very they are not very stark or poles apart field both of have their application and biomedical field uh what to say on to this i i agree it's a tough choice if, if i'll be in your shoe i'll be yeah, I'll be in the similar stage, but uh, I can talk to the professors, okay. And then what I'm trying to say is, it is your second year. The second year is offering that. Is it a possibility that in the third year you can uh, learn some other thing? Is is it like the course is uh, open to that? No, ma'am. It's like uh, we have the normal uh, things and. Apart from that, we have the specialization courses where we have to choose between these two. Okay. Uh, so, uh, have you studied chemistry and stuff like that? I'm very basic, like in first year. Do you, very, do you uh, like physical chemistry or the organic or... Like, because I'll come to the... Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, physical, inorganic, organic. So, which, what is your, uh, like, uh, what topic you're more inclined to or interests you more, organic or physical? Ma'am, organic. 
Uh, so now I'll tell you why did I ask this question. So this nano uh, biotechnology. Na, so if you see na nano biotechnology in this course, I'm pretty sure that they will give you a broader understanding of the field or something, you know, some more thing because you are bachelor's level. If you really wanted to make career into say only this field, so you in later stages, you'll have to understand nanoparticles and, you know, a deeper study and I know folks, I, I have seen the labs because I was in IIT Delhi. There are a lot of labs dedicated to nanoparticles. What I'm trying to say is they really need good understanding of physical chemistry. If, if that is the one discipline you really wanted to study deeper and deeper and deeper. So I'm not scaring you, but what I'm trying to say is if that's one thing you can see it as a parameter to decide, you can think it. Organic chemistry is one such thing because a lot of the, you know, biological process, metabolism, which are going inside the body, they, they are all organic molecules, right? So, and the yeah. drug designing and all that, like I, my field, let me tell you about my field. So I work in a small molecule drug discovery. Okay. So small organic molecule, which can be a potent therapeutic or drug in future. Like that is our broader goal, although it's very difficult, but what I'm trying to say, so because I was from the organic chemistry background. I like it a bit more. So I pursued this field. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that these fields require a little bit of, although they are similar, but they still require a little bit of different expertise, different interest. Because the background knowledge you'll be building on, if you really want, if you really like organic chemistry and all that stuff, so probably I'll suggest that gain more exposure on drug designing. Because here you will you'll come across a lot of organic chemistry and probably since you like it, you will understand that course and you'll get, you know, interested in that course and that will that course will drive you a bit more than what nano biotechnology will do it for you. But suppose if you really, you know this field and then, okay, but you want to, you know, broaden your skills and that's the only uh, point at this particular say no I just want to learn some because I attend some of the courses of AI AI I don't have nothing to I neither know any of the coding language nothing but what I'm trying to say if your focus is just to be aware of what other fields are doing okay you want to just expand your horizon you think that okay this drug designing you can uh, say in future you can from this course or this 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 you can learn but right now you just want to expand you can you want to know whether your what is your real interest you don't know your real interest till now but you are just you know open to explore that thing then I'll say okay take different course which is not of your expertise sit in the course learn something and then then decide in future because it's you are at very early stage so it's okay to you know explore that way so there is there can be two different ways. Either get expertise on the same field which you are, you know, somewhat comfortable with or get some basic understanding of what other field is like. So you have to decide what is your, currently what is your goal. So you want to, because I am telling you openly, like I sat in some computational classes, just I don't, I don't know anything about computation work, but I, I got some skills just because of, listening to some folks sitting in that conference room or something, some short courses or something like that, just to see what these people are bringing on the table. I already did this nano, uh, that course was like uh, applications of nanomaterials, something like that in IIT Rooki. I took it for a semester just to see what this discipline is all about. I didn't, I haven't used it. I, I don't know. But yes, in future, I know that if somebody will talk about something i'll have a basic understanding of it what the person is talking about so initially if you want to just broaden your skills you can go for that nano biotechnology if you know if you say no i just want to at, at the stage stage my focus is like i want to explore more on drug designing and since you like organic chemistry a bit more, then that can be one of the, you know, good course to study. And this nano thing maybe in later because learning doesn't stop. It's not just if you take some specific A course and you are leaving some B course, it's not that you are not able to learn B at the later stages. There are a lot of different opportunities will come across your path. And maybe if you'll, if you'll get interested into that particular topic, you can learn it anywhere.
So this is how I can sum up. I, I hope that it addresses your query a, a bit. Thank you, ma'am, for your advice. Ma'am, one more thing that uh, like what type of internships do we uh, we should uh, attend and uh, how how many like in a year uh, at what institutions that will be better and yeah. Yeah, so it's a very good question. I always suggest people to uh, fetch some internship or because it will build your CV. Why I'm saying this? Suppose in later uh, stages, if you are, uh, say, you know, uh, joining a PhD program or even if you are uh, applying abroad or you are, you'll be applying to postdoc or something like that, even if you are applying directly to a job, you should have something to write. If you are not utilizing your say bachelor's or master's or PhD level, you will just have only the academic details in your CV. And that doesn't interest too much, believe me. So what I did personally was like when I was in DU, when I was in IIT Roorkee, when I was in IIT Delhi, I keep my eyes ear open okay so i look around because i already mentioned that i'm from very humble background my parents cannot bring something for me on the table believe me they are not from science background nobody is a teacher nobody is a professor nobody is in this research line they are poles apart okay so what i'm trying to say is you have to keep your senses open when you're in the campus or somebody's telling you some some information is being shared that is why how social media you can uh, make use of it there are a lot of internships available there I know like I did one of this uh, there are a lot of summer schools also so I remember when I was in ma uh, master's I did this Taiwan international graduate program TIGP it is called it is very prestigious and uh, I worked in this academy Seneca which at that time is among 20-25 top research institutes so and in these two to three months all, first of all they are paid you know they'll take all your travel ex expenses, you'll be getting good amount of fellowship. So a master student or say a bachelor student getting a good amount of money, I got for two months, I got one lakh twenty thousand, And then I know this much, if I join some, uh, you know, a job also directly after bachelor's, I won't be getting this much money. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's all plus and plus to you. You'll get good exposure. You'll get good money. So try to look for positions. One, as I told you, there is TIGP. I don't know whether it is still running or not, but it was there in Taiwan. And then other, I know there are some summer schools also. Sometimes some, with the problem with the summer schools is that they'll sometimes, uh, they're partly funded in a way that, okay, they'll take care of your, say, accommodation and fooding, but they say that travel grants can't be paid. Okay, so you have to manage your travel the problem of summer school is this but yeah they are, to make your cv fascinating and stuff like that summer schools are also this there are a lot of i don't know about your exact discipline but i know that there are iupac summer schools so some of them usually held in venice italy and some of them in rome or the different different places of europe so one such thing is there and sometimes that uh what you can do is in your free time you can actually serve google you can straight away write in someone in your field and internship, summer schools or something like that. I you nobody told me about this TIGP Linda. Believe me, nobody told me about this. I never heard of this. My professor never, never, never. Like I didn't get these information on my table as such. Like somebody have told me these things. I got to know by Google surfing. In my free time, I used to just surf the net. Okay, what other things are there? Are there some conferences available? Are there some, some summer schools available? Or are there some internship? And then when I search, I found it. Oh, this is already there because I was searching for it. Sometimes we don't know whether such, you know, a platform exists, but it does exist. So what I'm trying to make it use a good use of your time, do web surfing and I remember uh, some good research institutes in Spain, France, and one more country. They usually encourage people from uh, bachelor's and first year of master's, first or second year. I like, yeah, I have seen that advertisement because I forwarded that to some people also. So th those, you know, encourage young fellows to just have the exposure because 
and some of the embassies you can also scroll so i ha huh, so i can mention that this is i can write in the chat there is what is the name country is czech republic okay uh, so you can check the embassy of czech republic in, in in new delhi or something like that in india you can just write it so they usually provide good amount of fellowship to the people uh, who are uh in their bachelor's or master's level so maybe they'll range they'll be uh, giving you a fellowship for say three three months to six months it depends and it's a good amount of fellowship you can sustain there so uh, czech republic is one country which actually encourages young fellow to get their exposure and i'm telling you there are very off countries people usually focus on germany and us okay but th these kind of you know countries Czech Republic or some Spain or some France or something, they have a very good research institutes, which we are, we Indians are not aware of it. I can tell you one IOCB is there. It's in world, like if I'll, you know, uh, focus on my discipline, believe me, it's one of the top ranking. But since it is in uh, Czech Republic, people won't focus on it. So what I'm trying to mention it, just serve the net. There are some good research institutes who are coming with good fellowships. You can definitely search for this since you are in a very early stage. So look for this Czech Republic embassy and they'll post a lot of good information there where you can fetch some internship. And similarly, you can keep on searching and keep on applying in whatever stage you are, master's level or even PhD level also, I'll say, attend some summer school. You talk to your guide, even if you're not like usually they discourage, but what you can do is apply if you got selected. When you are selected, when your funding is sorted and when somebody won't have to give money from his pocket, believe me, he'll say yes. The problem is if you'll ask somebody beforehand and you are not, oh, can I apply to this? Then he'll say, oh, no, not required. So I always suggest people, if I'm telling all these things because you will be pursuing that journey, okay? So get the positive results with you and then tell somebody, okay, you already have this. The only thing left is that you will be leaving. That's it. And everybody will support you at that point. So keep on uh, building your CV. Since you are in very initial stage, it is very important to do that. Very important because at the end, you really want something to be there on your CV. Thank you, ma'am. That was very informative. So any final questions for the day, then we can end the session. And I hope that uh, for the day, at least you are satisfied that I, I tried to respond to your queries, but in future also, like if you are struggling with something and you are again, you know, confused because I know that there are a lot of sometimes rumors, false facts, there and you know research institutes and something like that so you can reach out to you if i want to be having i'll be honest with you guys like it's not that i'll have all the answers uh for you but what i can assist you is that i can probably connect you with the right person okay since the person has done this thing you can directly talk to that person because i'm not in that position and don't have that expertise probably that person will help you more. So that is my intention that, you know, we should grow as well-informed student. We should be, we should make educated and well-informed decisions in our life. That is what, that is the purpose of, you know, spending this one, one and a half um, hour of talk, like conversation, just that we should know what is there. We should, you know, ignore all the false things that because they, I have faced a lot of things. So I know that it's all crap that sometimes goes and it usually, you know, divert you from the mainstream. So uh, try to uh, meet people, reach out. And sometimes believe me, like this is the final advice I'll tell you for the day. It's always good to ask questions and it's always good to reach out to people. Even if doing that, you will face a lot of, like you'll face that people are not responding to you. There are other hundred of people ready to support you. If say handful of people are not responding or not guiding you that well, or they, they think that they don't have that much of time with them, 
it's always you from your end you have to keep on because it's your life right it's your career you want best out of it so okay 10% are not responding maybe there are other 100 but since if you feel too hesitant and you think oh nobody is going to reply nobody you know give you that much attention so don't get bogged down by that always write like your effort should be that your effort should be that you will write whether you will get respond or not and linkedin is good for that please reach out to the people talk if you get your answers well and good if you didn't get it it's okay you can talk people in your proximity and then just keep on just keep on you know building your knowledge that is what i can sum up with